Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. So, since the last episode, uh, there was an update, and I updated the pack. And I'm actually recording this a bit late because I updated the pack. The update just... It was honestly the update that almost made me quit the pack. And not because of really anything in particular. I mean, there's a lot of annoyances in this update, but it's just that... Every update within this pack, when I, when you know, whenever I first started this pack, I had really high hopes for it. But it seems like every update that comes out, I move further and further away from having high hopes for this pack. Now it's really just a catch-all kitchen sink pack with extended crafting. I think um, it's kind of lost a lot of its expert pack um, or focused pack feel, and it's just kind of a Kind of a kitchen sink. Um, there was some mods added, and this is one major concern with this, with the updates with this pack is there was some mods added, which AE2 was added, and a whole suite of AE2 mods. So it was like four four mods in total related to AE2. Um, so you have that on top of refined storage, and there were some quests added and stuff, which I love AE2 way more than refined storage. I can't stand refined storage. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I'll use it, but I'm not really a fan of it. There's a lot. There's a lot of situations with the mods with this pack, where I think the dev needs to decide what his vision for the pack is, instead of just throwing anything and everything. Because this pack has the longest load up time of any pack. It has the worst um, or the longest startup, like load in to the world of any pack, and it has one of the worst performance uh, minus like crashes and stuff you know there's not there's not an astronomical amount of crashing uh, within this pack I get a few every once in a while but like just loading sheer loading there's just so much in this pack and it's because of so many duplicate and unused mods that's like we got another way to teleport so that brings it up to like 15 different ways to teleport um, the rails mod that was in here was replaced with useful rails which really aren't all that useful um, so instead of instead of putting a good rails mod in we got rails that teleport and rails that go fast is what we got uh, which that's another way to teleport and then AE2 is just a bunch more bloat for this pack um, it's just very, very frustrating and then on top of that there was about 41 recipes that were this is this is what really I think I think it was the straw that broke the camel's pack. Um, I've decided to keep going with this pack, at least for now, but future updates, depending on how it goes, I may just stop updating this pack uh, because the updates, the pack just gets progressively worse every update that comes out, I think. Um, and most of the balancing that's that's been coming into the pack of light is just nonsense. Um, but I think I think one of the biggest issues I've had, like there was a lot of recipe changes. Um, a lot of them, well, a few of them made sense, but the majority of them were just nonsense changes. Like for example, this is this is the one that irritated me the most. Okay, um, and we're just taking a minute to talk about this because I literally almost just dropped this pack. I was on the fence about it uh, for a big chunk of today. So the empowered blocks were changed. You know before. Um, they took the blood infused glowstone, but for balance reasons, it was changed to bricks on some of them. It's like everything but the um, emerald and the diamantine. It was changed to bricks, which makes it's like recipes are just getting changed to be changed. I think. Um, also, another thing, I think this might be an oversight, um, but the data storage was changed. Um, so that it takes memory, but the advanced crafting recipe was left the same. So I don't know if this is like you can craft it through this and it's a little bit cheaper just to have another automation interface, or if it's meant to be, um, if that if that recipe is meant to be removed. I'm not really for sure about that. Um, I went ahead and automated this method um, because memory is not really all that expensive. That recipe actually made a bit more sense, but there was some that just made no absolute sense at all. That's like um, all most of the seeds from mystical agriculture were changed. 
Um, I guess it's to make it more gated. But now it takes a random two blocks in here. Which I think if you have four essence, you probably have 20 essence. You know, it's not really much in the way of gating. It's just a couple more essence, which you automate and it's just infinite. It's kind of like the blood magic changes uh, to recipes that were just that were just bad. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. The blood magic, the blood magic recipe tweaking is just way off par. Um, <laughs> it's like one of the worst I've ever seen. And then um, the last thing I'll show you just really, really quick, the carpenter, this was another random change. Um, this used to be too hardened glass. This was changed to a microchip tier two and a copper tank. Um, so I had to automate copper tanks and I don't know. It's just a, it's just a whole batch of like random things and it's terrible whenever you update and you go through and it's just like invalid, invalid, invalid to just a whole lot of your crafters. And then you have to go through and sort through all of these. And it's, I think I've got everything. It's not to say I didn't miss something, but I think I've got everything. Um, time will tell, I guess. And, and the mod additions are just getting ridiculous because it's like trying to fit every possible mod into this pack for just random purposes. Like career bees got added, which career bees is a great mod. Don't get me wrong. And I love bees in a pack that accents bees but this pack doesn't accent bees because it gives you you know environmental tech and and all that stuff and mob spawning and just everything so early into the pack that bees are pretty much obsolete i don't know like exoria uh, although that pack had its faults like mid to late game just due to just being mainly kitchen sinky um that pack the beginning especially really accented bees this pack the bees are just kind of thrown in here for just more stuff. Um, you know. I mean, I can look past the quests and stuff and, and all that, but it's kind of, this pack is kind of hitting that, that same issue that the modern skyblock and all that stuff, those packs hit, where it's just like, just random recipe changes that make no sense and just sticking every possible mod in, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, they perform, the performance on those was better than uh, the performance on this pack, but it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse every single update, so. And I looked, the last 10 updates, mods have been added, and the majority of them were just, you know, very minute things, you know, that make no sense. So, for me, this pack has really lost a lot of its focus and its its uniqueness, and, and it's just, it's pushing this pack into just one big kitchen sink with extended crafting, which, you know, like the, the key notes on this pack, you know, Dungeons, Dragons, Space Shuttles, of course, Space Shuttles, there's going to be a lot of that, but Dungeons and Dragons, there's not really much integration. I mean, yeah, Majestic ingots and Ancient Dust, kind of, but you can craft those, and that's it, you know, that's all the integration for Dungeons, and there, so far I've seen no integration for Dragons. You can kill dragons, they're in the world, but are they important to kill? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. So uh, it's kind of a bummer that this pack has, has reached the point that it has. So, But I am planning on continuing on. So um, we'll probably just start pushing more towards just finishing it and calling it a day. Um, the only reason I didn't stop it is because I'm enjoying the build. And um, I know some people are interested in seeing it through to the end. Um, even though the Galactocraft and Extra Planets grind coming up isn't much to look forward to, <laughs> I promise. Unless you like recolored the uh, 12 planets that are all just recolors of each other. But um, Anyways, I did complete some quests between episodes. So I'm just going to run through these really, really quick. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time turning them in. Um, you know, that's what we're turning in. This is what we're getting. Um, but I have a bit and I want to get on with what we're going to do today because we do have um, a bit of stuff. Um, to get done. Most of this stuff is all just pretty much basic um, craft stuff. A vast majority um, we already you know had. It's just a matter of picking it up um, and turning and, and getting credit for the quest of course. Um, and we're also there's a couple things I'm planning on doing this episode and um, we're going to do a little bit of automation work like I mentioned that we were going to do 
at the end of last episode. The naphtha, by the way, you just run oil. Um, I've actually got a fractionating steel set up right down here. And I ran four buckets of oil through, which got me my four buckets of naphtha. Now, if you want to get that, if you want to get one-to-one -one ratio, you have to use the reflux column uh, for this. It's not an expensive upgrade at all. Oh, and the boosting mixture, this was added. Um, this is also kind of pointless, I think, for most things. Because for automation, you would have to, like if I wanted to automate, say, reflux columns, for example, you would either have to have a dedicated system to making this, which it uses um, alpha glass flasks, and you have to make this refined boosting mixture, which is made right here, the alchemical imbuer or the fluid enricher, but it uses three ingots, three different types of ingots, and actually none of these ingots except for Naquita is actually even used for anything else. And Naquita is mainly, I think, for the SG craft, the Stargate stuff, and once again, that's unless you just want 50 ways to teleport, um, that's really all that mod adds. But, um, but the boosting mixture the the issue with the boosting mixture is yeah it boosts speed and you get a little bit better output it's not much like on a craft that makes 60 um items like say with the crystal uh the crystal ingots or whatever you get an extra four um so it's not you know it's not really i don't think worth it for most things um, especially not for automation because you would either have to set up another carpenter that can use the boosting mixture or you would have to make sure that you've got that boosting mixture constantly being produced so is it really worth it i don't think so because whenever you start automating things you know it's kind of like going for quintuple ore processing when you have um environmental tech there's no point you know because it's just it's a whole lot more time and more resources and stuff that goes into it than what you really get out of it you know when you have infinite materials, I did get this crafted by the way, because we actually had everything planted except for, the only thing I had to plant was I had to plant a peppercorn sapling, which I planted one of those um, over by the um, the tower, so. Um, but I don't, I don't know that the boosting mixture is really worth it, and if the speed itself is an issue for you, uh, what you can do is you can just make a good circuit board, which we're gonna be doing that uh, before too long and quickly covering those, like the soldering. Um, circuit boards and stuff so um, but a lot of the the quests that I completed were um, I mean here in a second I did quite a bit of alloys and stuff um, kind of clearing out some of the quests that were over here so right and this tab is now 100% done I finally got around to that shulker box but um, these right here choice reward um, I'm gonna take the blocks of gold uh, there was some more, um, and there was some more, I guess you would say, balancing to um, loot bags, but I mean, that mod, it's so unbalanced. Like, this pack, balance isn't so much a thing in this pack, because there's just so many ways to bypass most things in this pack. So, and then we had to make a crossbow. Um, which I made it. I just threw it in the the thing because I'm not planning on using it because um, TC weapons are just they're overused. <laughs> they're they're so powerful too. So and all these are pretty much just alloys that we've automated. It's mainly the nuclear craft alloys. Um, also the graphite. I did set up automation for the other plates. Because I know that, um, or the other plating, because I know that we're going to start using that here soon. And so I wanted to go ahead and get that automation out of the way. So, I know I've had I've had a lot of people say, like, they've lost interest in this pack. And I'm, I'm definitely there. I'm definitely there with you. I'm just pushing on for those that are still kind of interested in the pack. So, um, we're almost done. This will be the last of the, the quests. I just want to pop these on camera so you kind of know where we're at on stuff. I'm going to take that. And 
all this stuff. And then I also automated Signalum and I automated Enderium. Um, and this is actually, I'll pop upstairs here in a second and show you um, what we're using for that. But basically I'm using the fluid infusers to infuse a bucket, like fill a bucket with the liquid. Um, and then I'm just crafting the dust out and, uh, and yeah, so there we go. Okay, everything is turned in now and we're up to where we should be. And I think we're actually fairly close to getting into main quest three, which we'll see what kind of treasures that holds. Um, but you can see right here, I've got destabilized redstone and resonant ender, uh, locked in a fluid transposer. And then over here, that other magma crucible, um, is breaking down um, ender tears and ender pearls. Like if we take a look right here, I've got these slotted in the export. Um, okay, with that, it's time to move into what we're actually going to be doing today. That is, we're gonna quickly automate some blood magic and we're going to really quickly automate some bees and then we're go probably going to push on into the profiling bench, which is gonna start us into the rock hounding mod which I think, I'm assuming that's probably going to be a big chunk of tier 3, because I'm, I'm guessing tier 4 is when we start getting into space. Which, yippee. Uh, <laughs> so, I guess we'll we'll start into the rock counting stuff. I'm going to try to follow the quest as close as I can, because I don't want to get into space and then have to do the same stuff multiple times, you know. Okay, so I've got some nodes here, and let me get, let me order a crafter. Um, which I'm out of diamonds again. <laughs> we're Oh yeah, we've got to set up this too. Um, this episode might run a little bit longer, but we spent a little bit of the episode um, talking about our feelings. <laughs> um, which I, you know, I'm going to get, I know I'm going to get the comments like, if you don't like it, don't play it. That's not really a proper response, I think, to an opinionated uh, statement, I don't think. But uh, that's just my opinions on things. And I know... I know there's been quite a few people that have uh, shared my my issues. I know a lot of people have have stopped playing this pack, like on my Discord and stuff, have brought it up because of because of the same issues. But but the pack's not the pack's still playable. <laughs> so like I said, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop updating if if it continues to become a, an issue, you know, um, with just making the pack less and less playable. Okay, so our crafter is ordered, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, a little bit of an automation system, and I'm actually going to have this setting uh, right over here. Let me get some blocks. We're going to start with the blood magic automation side of things because um, we should. <laughs> um, and we're going to put just a chest setting here, and then our crafter is going to plug into the chest, and then I'll just uh, I'll plug it up with some cables, run those down. And then what I'll probably do is different automation that's off-site. Um, we'll just set it up, you know, the same way and we'll have a chest and, and so on. Um, and then I'm going to do an input routing node that's going to set, say, right here. And then we're going to have a master routing node that sets here. And we'll just go ahead and connect these up. And then our input routing node is going to connect over to our blood altar. And bear in mind, this is the one that's going to be for automation. The other one, um, which I'll finish setting up once we get this stuff automated. Oh, and I did uh, do a little bit of building over here, just kind of working on the top of that um, that little tower area. That's pretty much just a big tower that has our refined storage um, storage in it, but. Um, that's really the only purpose for it, but let me go ahead and grab this stuff out. And let me grab my blood orb. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put an output routing node setting here. And we're just going to bind this over like that. And then on the other side, we're going to have an input routing node that inputs. And this will be bound. Um, to that because we're going to make it all part of just the same master node network and then what we're going to do is put a precise filter and this will be on the north side 
precise filter there, and then this one on the south side, precise filter there. Okay, and then what we need to do is, um, well actually I've got a few different no, uh, slates on me that was stored in there. So on the input node we're going to put blank slates and we're going to put reinforced slates on there. And I was debating between a few different ways of automating this and I think what we're going to do is keep X amount stocked um, in the system. Okay, it seems like I missed a recipe. This is now steel plates instead of bronze plates because of reason. I don't know. Ugh. This pack, I swear. It's things like this that just boggle my mind. Like every machine in this pack is just switched up plates, really. And then I, I, I dislike when there's random changes for the sake of making random changes in a pack that all it does is just mess up your automation so you have to redo it. Um, it's so frustrating. It is so frustrating. And I know there'll be um, there'll be stuff like this that's going to come up. Stuff that I've missed. You know. Um, which it only takes a second to change over, yes, but when you have to change over so much of it, it's so frustrating. Alright, let's go ahead and clear recipe here and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that and save recipe okay we should be back in business now and then let me grab an external storage we've got our interface and then what I want to do is I want to get um, let's go ahead and set up some recipes so the slates for example the blank slates these are just one times compressed stone and so we're going to make a recipe that says if you take one times compressed stone, then you're going to get a blank slate. And we're going to encode that. And then next up, which mainly getting the slates automated, that's the key thing to automating um, all the blood magic, <laughs> basically. Um, next up, I'm going to have to teach it those, but if, let's see, can I do that? Yeah, okay, I can do that. And so we're just going to go through and make up recipes for all the slates. Um, even though we can't, in our current altar, we can't actually craft the um, the ethereal slates, but we will. And actually, the ethereal slates um, not super important to us at the moment. Um, it's actually not even impor that important that we automate them because there's not a whole lot of need for them. Um, within the pack. Also another thing I want to automate is infused glowstone which is like that and this was this was another change the infused glowstone blocks now take nine instead of four which you know just making it take like a few extra resources that's like the seeds that's not balancing and that's not <laughs> you know it doesn't make it expert -y. yeah I know it's just I don't know it's I think a misconception that compacting more resources makes expert equals expert mode, you know. Um, okay, and then I need to teach it the slate blocks as well, which will be that. Okay, and then we're going to set up another chest sitting right there, and this is going to be our import chest. So we're going to put an importer right there. We're going to have an output node that sets right here and actually you know what I could instead of having this here let's instead do it on the bottom and we'll just connect those up we'll connect that to that and then we'll connect that to that and then let me go ahead and tell it you know it can import the blood infused glowstone as well um, okay so now what I want to do is basically we just have to set up the well I gotta run the cables down for starters so there we go that's connected up and then the output routing node um, let me get another precise filter and on the output node I'm gonna put this in here and we're gonna say you can accept you know blank slates reinforced slates blood infused glowstone that way it doesn't get all the other like random stuff and then let's get 
let's get a piece of this compressed stone and then let's pop over and let's add compressed stone to that and then what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to keep so many blank slates on hand. So we're going to have a interface that sets right here. And then we're going to put an external storage onto this interface. And this external storage, we're going to say, um, we're going to say you can extract only. Um, on the interface and this will actually still need to be plugged up so let me just run a cable over like that um, so all this can do is extract it can't insert items into um, the interface and that way we avoid having just a, a constant cycle that just runs you know and then we're going to put in um, interface export blank slates and we're going to set this to 64 yeah, 64 is the max and then let's go ahead and do another 64. So we're going to keep a bunch of those on hand. And then I need a crafting card or crafting upgrade. Okay, so there's our crafting upgrade. And then all we have to do is we'll just pop this into the interface. And it should be able to start ordering um, the blank slates. So there we go. And if we pop over... This should be running now. It is, but I've got to change the number of speed upgrades that I've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to keep one um, in here. That seems to be working a bit better. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's good. So we'll just craft these one at a time, and that way we avoid just having a big pile of them. Now we should be back in business. If we take a look inside of here, this is steadily building up. And then we have 41 in there. If we take a look in here, we have 44, 45, and so on. Okay, so now it knows how to do that. And then what I'm going to do is, let me make, um, oh wait, it was like that. Let me make a blank slate block real quick. And let me just add uh, blank slate block to this. So now it can make the reinforced slate. I'm not going to add that just yet. Um, and the reason being is, I'm going to set that to one as well. Um, and I'm not going to add um, the reinforced slate just yet. I'm going to let it craft up the blank slates. And then once it's done stocking those, then I'll teach it to make the, um, or teach it to do the reinforced slates, I guess. And we'll see, I've got five slates. I might actually add keep 64 there as well we'll do three stacks of blank slates um, I do need to add more sacrifice runes to that one and maybe even cut out the capacity runes that are in there um, and get it moved up to the next tier so because it, that's all it's really gonna do is just craft things so um, but I'll work on that it's basically just a process of adding uh, you know more and more things to it now so um, okay so that's out of the way and I'm not going to mark off Blood Magic Automation right now because we still have to do nodes, you know, with the Hellfire Forge. And so we'll do that. Not this episode, though, <clears throat> um, because we don't have the time. There's more important matters uh, to attend to. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to make um, just a couple apiaries. We don't actually need many of these because we don't need them for many things, um, in truth. But... Um, takes silicon there but it takes seed oil here okay well just because it doesn't really matter I'm just gonna pop over here and just craft up a couple of these okay so let's go ahead and get four of those we'll make four apiaries that should be fine now I'll just grab that back out I don't use those things very often but for just random things I need to move them over here and have like a little dedicated space for uh, the artisan tables you know but I'll get to that and that's gonna fill right back up awesome and then I just have to get the apiaries so there's four of those and then we're gonna need some kind of transfer nodes or transfer pipes um, I'm going to go with 
I'm actually just going to go with transfer nodes um, in this case. And I don't think there's actually much from these that we need, except for just beeswax uh, within this pack. I haven't noticed much of anything. And so I think that's what we're going to do is just set up for beeswax. And so what we'll do is we'll set up our, we'll put our apiary set up just right over here, I think. Yeah, we'll do it like that. And then we'll have our apiary setting there, 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 and there. And we'll just pop back here for now. I don't know where you came from, but you needed to die. Um, and then we will open this up. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to put a transfer node here, 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 and here. And then we're going to run our transfer pipes. Um, we're going to bring this out and down like so and then we'll just run a line out across like that and then we'll bring our pipes down like that and grab this and we're going to tell it like once it reaches this point don't go back along in that direction go you know go off in this direction because that way items are going to travel like down it's going to try to put it in the apiary if it can't it's going to go ahead and push it down along this line here. This way we can use up some of these uh, transfer nodes too. So, Okay, so let me pop over and let me get, um, there's a couple things that we're going to need. First up, we're going to need the bees that we're actually going to be using. And I mean, we could breed for better bees. I'm not going to worry about it because honestly, we don't even need a whole lot of beeswax in truth because it's only used for uh, the magical dust, like the white magic dust. And it's actually only used temporarily. We could actually move on to star metal. I just want to go ahead and set this up so we have it um, in case it does come back up. We have it kind of backing up, so to speak. Let's see. We've got some bees here. And I think technically the, the biome that we're in is a forest biome. And ideally we want stuff that's pristine stock. So let's pop over here. I may have to break some beehives. I've got a bunch around here though, so it's no biggie. And let's grab a chest and a trash can. And then let's get a filter. And this pack does have gen industry if you're into that. Um, you could do the breeding. For me, I don't tend to like bees when gen industry is involved because it just kind of, it takes all the fun out of it. Um, you know, it's great if you're not into breeding bees, but I like that aspect of it. And so, I usually I don't get into genistry too much. Um, I've covered it a little bit, like in uh, what all the mods we did it pretty in depth on there, um, or used it, but we won't be using it on here. There's not really much use in it, and in, in using it in here, I don't think. Um, okay, so we're gonna put down a chest there, and this is the one that's gonna have the node. And then we're going to have a trash can that sits right here. Filter in it. Or let me, let me actually set the filter here. And we're going to say, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a blacklist for this. I know some of the bees I can um, just use a, just a generic bee, but I know... It's one of the B add-ons. I want to say career bees and some of the others, which I don't know that we're really going to get into those, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and just do a blacklist for this. Um, let me dump those into there, and we'll see if these will run. I think they should. Of course, no flowers. Yeah, that's to be expected, though. Um, I just want to make sure that the temperature and everything's good for them. Grab some grass blocks and let me get a dandelion. And then if I put this dandelion like right here, okay, that's now running. Awesome. That's what I want to see. And then what I'll do is I'll build this little area out a little bit with a little bit of grass, you know, and they'll actually make flowers for us. So before long, this little area is going to have a bunch of flowers, but Okay, so the bees are running, and this is going to take a little while probably before we see some beeswax and stuff. Uh, what I'll probably do is just let it build up between episodes, and then we'll 
we'll do the input uh, for this. I could have made one of these, which is actually pretty good. I'm gonna make one of those too, because this one will break pretty quick. And we get a quest complete for a scoop. We made one a long time ago, but it's been a while. Okay, and then we get either two iron rods, five strings, or five honeycombs. I'm gonna take the honeycombs, because why not? And I don't even know that we're gonna worry about scanning our bees and all that within this pack, because, you know, like I said, it's just not, not really necessary. And I don't think I ever made, I don't know if I ever made a smoker or not. I can't remember. I did, I made a bee smoker. Okay, well let's grab that. And basically what we're looking for is just pristine bees. Um, so most of these that are ignoble, I'm just going to toss them because we don't need them. There's a pristine. Um, I'm not worried about curious hives. I want just forest hives for now. I didn't use the smoker, but I'm not worried about it. I do need to get all this, uh, all these beehives around here. The main reason I haven't been cleaning them up is because I knew we were going to start bees at some point, and I wanted to have them available for however many apiaries I set up. But honestly, I think, I think four is going to be plenty. And then if we, um, you know, if we wanted to upgrade the bees and make them faster and stuff, we could get away with a whole lot less. Um, honestly, I think four might even be overkill because you just don't use the stuff, the beeswax and stuff all that much. And I tell you what, let's actually go for these, um, might actually add like one more of these. I'm going to go for a little bit of variety here. But I think these Curious Hives are from Magic Bees, and there should be a chance for them to make Magic Beeswax. Mystical uh, Bee Produce makes Mundane Combs. Mundane Combs are the ones that have a 10% chance for Magic Wax, and that's the one that would give us two times on the White Magic Dust. Of course, Stardust is three, so I don't know how long we're actually going to use this for. But yeah, we're going to go with one of those, maybe two of those, um, if they'll run good over here. We'll see. So let's do that and that. And then basically what's going to happen is just everything gets cycled back around. It still says sky obstructed. I don't know why the sky is obstructed here, but in none of the other spots. Actually, I wonder if there's maybe a star field here or something is the reason why. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is just shift this. So I'm just going to do that, and then we'll block off that direction. And block off, let's also block off that direction. Forgot to do the upsides. That direction. And this one, it won't go up. So, yeah. So we'll block up the top section. So everything's basically going to funnel straight down into the chest. Okay. And that should be good. And now it's just a matter of waiting until... Um, these hives start getting some stuff in. And, oh, it made another drone. Finally. It finished, basically it finished a cycle. Made a new princess, made a new drone. You can see the princess got put in here. And, um, probably made two drones. One of them bred with the princess, made a new queen. And then the other one's basically just backing up in there. So, we'll see if, um, if the stats match. Chances are with them just being wild bees, the stats will match. And they'll just keep making drones that stack and basically stacking up in the apiary. Okay, I was just looking. I looked up the bees, and that's all that comes from these bees. There's no nothing else. So I'm just going to put honeycomb and mundane comb in the blacklist, and everything else can go into the trash can. And then what we'll do is just place down the trash can, and we'll pop in our filter. And that way, anything else, which will be basically just drones, can just go in the trash can, because we don't need them. It's going to build up a stack in each of these, um, and then that's going to be plenty, you know. And we did get a little bit more uh, combage, it looks like. And so for right now, at least, until we come across more bees, which I do I do want to play a pack. Um, again, like we were doing Exoria, which was a bit of fun, but I'd like to play like another bee-centric pack with like a good bee thing without a bunch of like mystical crops and uh, environmental tech, at least early game, you know. Um, 
or at least they do different things, something like that, you know. Um, but we're going to go ahead and mark off start bees. Bees are started, and then if we need to expand on them later, we will. Um, but for right now, I, I don't know of anything else that really is needed from bees, but we'll see. We'll play it by ear. But um, So that's marked off. 